In the last lesson, we built the homepage for the restaurant website, Semaya, and covered concepts such as page structuring, margin and padding, and workflow shortcuts. In this lesson, we'll cover the responsive editing foundations in Elementor, optimize the Semaya homepage for responsive viewing, and set this page up to display as the homepage on the website. With so many people accessing websites from different devices these days, it's more important than ever to optimize your website for different viewports or screen sizes. Elementor provides you with tools to preview your website for different devices and optimize your designs accordingly. With just a few tweaks, we'll make the home page display perfectly on tablet and mobile. So let's go. Let's start with a tour of the responsive features in Elementor. First, click here on the bottom panel to enter responsive mode. At the top of your screen, you'll see this panel, which shows mobile, tablet, and desktop viewport icons. Clicking a viewport icon will preview the page at the selected screen size. The presence of a viewport icon next to any option in the settings of a widget, column, or section indicates that the changes made there will apply specifically to that viewport. It's important to understand that in most cases, responsive edits in Elementor are inherited from the larger viewport down to the smaller viewport. So this means that desktop responsive settings are applied downward to tablet, as well as mobile views, and changes to tablet settings are applied to mobile. Since we've already got everything set up for desktop view, we're ready to optimize the tablet view and apply these principles to the design. Let's take a look at the hero section. When spread out over three columns in tablet mode, the content gets cut off. Let's modify the way they display to give each element the attention it deserves. We'll move the first column to the top and allow it to take up the full width of the section. To do this, select the column, and for the column width percentage, type in 100. Ta-da! As you see, the column now takes up the full width of the section, pushing the other two below into the next row. When this happens, the width of these two columns resets. So select the second column, and set its width to 90. Now we just need to add some padding to the top of the intersection, like this. Scrolling down, we can see that the section below already looks great on tablet. Scrolling further down, well, this section could be adjusted a bit. Select it, and set the minimum height to 300 pixels. Let's use a shortcut to quickly apply this setting to the two sections below. Right-click the section and select Copy. Now right-click the section below and select Paste Style, or use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control Shift V. This applies the settings of the copied section without changing the content. Right-click the next section and Paste Style once more. Neat! Now select this heading to adjust its layout. In Advanced, unlink the padding. This resets the padding to zero. Now copy and paste style on the next two headings. Scroll back up and select the right column. In Advanced, add 5% padding to give the content a little more breathing room. Do the same for the matching columns in the next two sections. We're not using paste style in this case because it will paste the column background color as well. Okay, these sections are good to go. Scroll down to the last section. The heading is a bit large here, so we'll need to update its size for tablet. We'll be using this heading again on the website, so it's a good idea to edit it from the global style and not have to make this change again next time we use this style on tablet. Click the heading, and in Style, Typography, 
Click the global icon. You'll notice a gear icon here. Click it to enter the global font settings. Now click the pencil icon for the style primary and change the size. Since we're in tablet mode, this will not affect the desktop font size we set previously. Great, be sure to update and go back to the editor. Let's take a quick look at the heading. Perfect. Now let's take a look at mobile. The editor scrolls all the way down upon switching to mobile, so I'll just pull up my handy navigator, now I know you know that shortcut, and zoom back to the first section. By default, on mobile, each column takes up the full width of the page, so we don't need to manually adjust the column sizes one by one. The font size looked great for desktop and tablet, but it's a bit large for mobile devices. Since it's a custom style that we're only using once on the website, there's no need to go into the global settings. Click this heading, and in Style, change the size of the font. And since we're in Mobile View, this view will not affect tablet or desktop views. Scroll down, and adjust the social icons by selecting them and setting the columns to Auto. Scroll down a bit more and you'll see that we have two adjacent sections of text. We can actually reverse the display order of the columns in responsive views by going to Advanced, Responsive, and toggle Reverse Columns, Mobile, to Yes. OK. Let's adjust the layout of these solid colored columns so they are proportionate to the other columns. Click the first one, and in Advanced, add 15% padding. Do the same for the other two solid color block columns. Great, almost done. Scroll down to the last section, and in Advanced, unlink and add some margin to the top and bottom. Then select the text, and add some padding which, as you can see, adjusts the layout, making it much easier to read. Perfect. Our responsive edits are now complete. Go to the bottom panel where the save options are and click Update to save the changes. Recall that we already published our page from the WordPress dashboard, but for pages that have not yet been published, the button would display Publish instead. OK, the homepage's layout and design is complete. We have one last step, which is to let WordPress know that this page is the home page for the website, ensuring visitors will always land here when entering your URL. Click the top left menu and then exit to Dashboard to go back to WordPress. Here on the left, hover your cursor over the settings and click Reading. Make sure a static page is selected and expand the list to see your available pages. Select the home page. Click Save, and your home page is complete. OK, great. You now know how to use Elementor's responsive options to optimize your web pages. In the next lesson, we'll build the Our Menu page using what you've learned so far, as well as new concepts, including new widgets and layouts. You'll also learn how to reuse elements in other ways. Mm -hmm.